Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at Newton's first law of motion, which is also called the law of inertia. And to help us sort of understand what's going on here, we've got a video. Uh, this was pulled off of YouTube. It was put there by a user named Science Fix. And in this video, there are just seven very nice demonstrations of inertia. And so we're going to look at them and I'm going to talk over them a little bit so that you can kind of see what's going on. Um, let's just take a look. So in the first one we see this ring and then the magic happens. So if we go back and we take a look at this, um, what we see we have this plastic ring sitting on top of an Erlenmeyer flask and just this little plastic object sitting on top of the ring. Now what this person does is they just take their finger and they hook inside this ring and they pull it away really really fast. Remember that inertia is the tendency of an object to keep doing what it was doing. And the more mass it has, the more inertia it has. So let's look at this plastic block at the top. Its inertia, its tendency to keep doing what it's doing, will have it want to stay right there, even when the ring is pulled out from under it. Um, there will be some force from friction on this, but that force is not enough to overcome the inertia of the object, which wants to keep it sitting still. Once the ring is gone, gravity acts on it, and it simply falls in the flask. And we can see this again with a bigger version of it, just to let you see that it is, in fact, falling straight down. All right, next we have a small-scale version of the trick where you pull the tablecloth out from under the dishes. We've got sitting on a piece of cardstock on top of a beaker, and what you're going to see is that the penny's inertia wants to keep it sitting there, even when this cardstock is knocked out from underneath it. Just like that. Now notice the penny does move a little bit. Notice there's our penny right there. Notice how it did move from its position right in the center. Uh, that it came with the card just a little bit. That's from the force of friction, pulling on it just a touch. You'll see the same thing if you try that old demonstration where you pull the tablecloth out from under the dishes. The dishes do move a little bit, but their inertia, their tendency to keep doing what they're doing, will keep them pretty much in the same place. All right, our next demonstration, and this is a series of three right in a row, uh, will show you the relationship between mass and inertia. The more mass something has, the more inertia it has. And what you're going to see is three times this person is going to pull this piece of paper out from under the beaker right there, once with the beaker having a lot of water in it, so that's more mass, and then with less water, less mass, and then no water, so even le um, less mass than that, excuse me. So what you'll see is that the beaker moves more and more with the paper, the less water is in there. And what this tells us is that the more mass an object has, the more inertia it has, the more it has a tendency to keep doing what it's doing. So there you can see it barely moved. With less water, it moves a little bit more. And then with no water, it moves noticeably as well. All right, here's a fun one. We stab this poor defenseless apple, and then what you're about to see is that this person is going to slam their fist down on the counter very, very fast. Now remember, the apple is suspended on the knife, so it's been stabbed, and it's sitting there. And when the person slams their hand down, well, let's just watch. Notice that the apple moved from being right there to right there. When the person got their hand going really fast and then stopped it abruptly on the table by hitting the hilt of the knife on there, the apple had a tendency to keep going. Its inertia would keep it traveling very fast in the same direction. So fast, in fact, that it overcomes the friction from the knife and slides down the knife because the apple had a tendency to keep going in the direction it was going. Uh, this same strategy can also be used to tighten the head of a loose hammer. What you do is you turn uh, with the metal part of the hammer this way and you slam it down on a counter and the inertia of the metal head of the hammer will carry it down on there, tightening it on the handle. 
All right, next we get to see why car accidents are so dangerous. It's going to pull this chair back and fling this chair into the other. And I want you to watch what happens to the books and to the little figure on top. Wait for it. All right, notice that when the chair stopped, the books and the figure on top of the books didn't stop. They kept going. This is part of what makes car crashes so dangerous. Once you're going at the same speed as the car, you have this inertia that wants to keep you traveling at that speed. And if no force stops you, you're going to keep going in that same direction until you experience a force. So in this case, we'll rewind that and take a look. The force that the books experience to stop them happens against this counter. Just like that. And finally, what I think is the most fun of these, this is an egg uh, sitting on top of this canister of water, and you've got a pie pan and then a couple things just to get the egg above the level of the edge of the pie pan, and I'm just going to let you watch this one and work out what happens to yourself, but it's a fascinating demonstration of inertia. And there you go.